All right, I've got my raw data, family income and gift aids. I figured out the correlation, slope and intercept of my least squares regression line. Um, just for reference, let's just type this out here. Y equals slope negative 0.04307x plus 24.31933. Okay, now, um, this price paid, we don't need that. Let's just delete it. Just get, get out of here. It's going to be in the way. All right, now, um, I want to make two more columns. The next column is going to be the predicted uh, gift aid or y hat, I'll just say y hat right there. Um, and then the residual, let's give us a little more space here. Okay, residual. Um, you can, I suppose you could use R for residual, but R is for correlation. So often in statistics, we use E for residual, E for error. Um, all right, so now, uh, if someone's income is $92,000, what would the equation over here, what would the equation say the predicted gift aid would be? So you just type in the equation here. So equal sign, um, just type it in. 0 0.04307 times X plus 24.31933. For greater accuracy, we can actually um, click the slope right there. That's I, I3. Put in dollar signs because when I copy this down, I don't want the I3 to change. So you can do um, F4 on a keyboard, um, dollar sign I, dollar sign 3. Okay, times X, which is in cell A3, and then plus, and then um, the Y intercept, which is 24.319. Let's just click that right there. Again, put in dollar signs. F4, we'll put in dollar signs for you. Okay. So let's just review that real quick. What did I just do? Um, I typed in the equation of the least squares regression line right here. So I'm taking the, the slope, which is, which is in cell I3, times the X plus the Y intercept, which is in cell J3. Um, and then I do that calculation and I get about $20,300. Now that's pretty close to the actual for this first data point. Um, so that, that's a good sign that the least squares regression line gives us a pretty good prediction. Um, so now we want to copy that down. So just click the, the cell where I typed in my equation. Uh, the little dot in the corner, you can drag it down or you can double click. And then it copied the formula down for all the rows. Now notice when I, let's look at the next row here. Uh, notice that, um, Anything with dollar signs did not change. It's still cell I3 and cell J3, the slope and winders up. But anything without a dollar sign, the cell A4, it changed uh, from A3 to A4. So that's really nice because then it calculates the predicted gift aid for the X that is in that row. Okay, so here we have all the predicted gift aids for all of the uh, values of X right here. Okay, now I want to calculate the residuals. Here, let's let's delete that and let's let's start over. So residual is the actual amount minus the predicted amount. So equal sign actual is in cell B3 minus the predicted, which is in cell C3. All right, so what just was calculated, it just subtracts how far off is the actual amount from the or how much how much is the how far apart are the are the actual amount from the predicted amount um now you you want to do um actual actual minus predicted that's the order you want to go and then you can double click that one copy all those down so you can see that most of the predicted values were off by one, two, or three, sometimes four or five dollars, so that thousand dollars. So it's it's a pretty decent, um, uh, a, a pretty decent fit. All right, now um, next I want to make a residual plot. A residual plot um, is is another scatter plot, really, 
it has X values for the X axis, but then the residuals are the Y axis. So on some spreadsheets, you can um, select a, a, a column here. You can do control shift down arrow to select the whole column uh, and then go back up again. And then if you press the control button on the keyboard and then you select another column, you can select two columns that are not next to each other. It's a really nice feature that some spreadsheets have. So now that I've selected my two columns, once again, it's the, the original X co coordinates and then the residuals, and then go to inserts and uh, scatter one more time, click scatter. And here we have the residual plot right here. Now notice that roughly half the residuals are positive, meaning the actual amounts were higher than the predicted amount. Roughly half the residuals are negative, meaning the uh, actual amounts were less than the predicted amounts. Now, you, if you see some pattern in the residuals, like, like they're all positive here and then they're all negative there, then a line is not a good fit. It would be better to use some kind of uh, equation, like a quadratic equation or something like that. But in this case, it looks like the points are fairly randomly scattered. I don't see any particular pattern. So that tells us that a linear model is a good model for, for this data. And that's it.